Hi everyone, I'm Dr. J from School of Physics and Astronomy at Monash, and I would like to talk to you about cosmic rays. About 100 years ago, scientists discovered these mysterious particles called cosmic rays. And often what astronomers do is we kind of give names to because things appear one way at first and then we realize that there's something else. So these cosmic rays are actually not rays, they're particles. So they're one of the most uh, energetic particles we know in the universe and they accelerate to those uh, energies or those velocities by some mechanism. Uh, the way they were discovered is that they were uh, um, the balloons, the scientists were uh, sending balloons up in the atmosphere and they would have uh, photographic plates or other means of measuring what's going on and they noticed these particles. And they noticed that, that, that the amount of particles increasing as the balloon is going higher up. So um, although we discovered them 100 years ago, we're still not sure what's producing them. Uh, the reason is because they charge particles. Mostly they are um, very ionized uh, atoms, nuclei of, of certain elements, and they're mostly positively charged. What that means is that as they're released from whatever source is creating them, they have to follow magnetic field lines of interstellar medium. Between the stars within the galaxy, we have what we call interstellar medium which is very low density, but it has magnetic field. And as those charged particles are released, they have to, they sort of get locked in and follow the path of magnetic field lines. So if we are to look at the sky and detect cosmic rays, we would see them coming uniformly from all over the sky. So then we look at the energy requirements, what could be so powerful to create these particles. And one of the most obvious uh, sources are supernova remnants. Supernova remnants are remnants of supernovae, and supernovae are explosion of massive stars. As you probably know, the way our sun creates energy is by fusing two hydrogen nuclei, sorry, four hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei. And in that process, some mass is lost, and that mass is the energy that is released that gives us uh, energy from the sun. And stars like our sun burn or fuse uh, than helium to carbon, and that's where they stop. They don't have enough mass to create temperature in their core to be able to burn um, carbon. But more massive stars, those, those that are eight or more times bigger than our sun, they can actually fuse carbon into the next element all the way up to iron. The reason they stop at iron is that iron is one of the most stable elements in the universe. So it requires more energy to be fused together than energy released. So these reactions by which stars produce energy basically become inefficient one, once the, the, star, the core of the star is full of iron. And this is where the thermonuclear reactions stop, these reactions of fusing uh, elements in higher elements. And the gravity of the star pour everything down and then the, the shock is created and bounces off. This is one of the most energetic events in the universe, and therefore we could imagine that this, this is the energy needed to then accelerate the particles. So as the shock is fo uh, bounces off the core of the star, the remain core of the star, which usually creates neutron star, or in some cases black hole, this shock travels and creates beautiful shells that we call supernova remnants. They come in various shapes and sizes and they usually live about a million years. And by live, we mean we, be, we are able to detect them, we are able to see them. So in this process, as these shocks are traveling, basically they're able to um, sweep the material in front of them and compress magnetic field. As they're compressing um, magnetic field in the interstellar medium, the particles that they, uh, they uh, sweep in their shock shells are basically then accelerated by passing back and forward through magnetic field lines. And at some point they gain enough energy to leave the source, to leave this shell of supernova remnants. That's the theory. In practice, we are struggling still to prove this uh, connection, mostly because the data that we need to prove this are still not of high quality. We just detected, uh, about 15 years ago, we just detected some of these particles in X-ray energies. And now we're able to detect them in gamma rays as well. But gamma rays still have quite low spatial resolution. So when we compare pictures of, of supernova remnants in optical and radio and X-ray with those of gamma rays, we can't make too many um, comparisons. So this is where the science of cosmic rays is uh, 
at, at the moment, and we basically rely on getting better and better observations and better and better telescope to actually prove this. Um, but cosmic rays being mysterious are often blamed for different things. One of the things they were blamed was that they killed dinosaurs. But that's discredited. Another thing was that they are um, responsible for global, global warming. But that's discredited as well, several times. Not working. The only thing they're really responsible for is basically bombarding Mars with a lot of particles. So as the co cosmic rays fall all over the sky, it, they interact with our atmosphere and they create shower of particles. So by the time uh, some of those particles reach the ground, they're quite low energy. So they're not as damaging, they're not ionizing radiation. So higher in atmosphere they are, this is why pilots and other people who fly are exposed to radiation a bit more, and this is why we have to limit how much time they spend high in the or orbit, like astronauts as well. But as those particles are stopped by atmosphere or uh, collide with the um, atoms in our atmosphere, they slow down and basically lose their energy. So by the time they reach the ground, they're quite weak. And you can actually build your own experiment. You can build your own cloud chamber and catch some of those particles. The link will be underneath this video. However, Mars doesn't have atmosphere as thick as us. It's only about 1% of what we have. So there's much less atoms there for cosmic rays to interact with. And therefore, they lose only a little bit of energy and they slow down only a little bit. So most of them reach the surface of Mars. And we have now Mars Curiosity that measured in quite um, uh, enough details of how much that radiation arriving over a long period of time. So we know it's okay for um, a robot, but it's not um, it's too much for humans and therefore for our astronauts and colonists they'll be able to spend only a certain amount of time on the surface roughly maybe four hours a day which when you think about most of us doesn't don't spend even on earth four hours outside a day so they will have to we have to monitor how much time they spend outside and then building a Martian colony or a, a temporary habitat will have to take into account protection from cosmic radiation and therefore there will have to be a thick layer that protects the human's, human's habitat. And probably the easiest thing is just to use regulate on Mars, to use this, the, the surface of Mars to build our habitats or just to dig and live in caves. Hope this was fun. See you later.